By the mid-1980s, the marshes had become a refuge for Shia Islamists in southern Iraq who opposed Saddam's regime. A small rebellion, Shia insurgents began using marshes as a base to hide from government forces. After the first Gulf War, Saddam ordered his engineers to carry out a massive public works project to drain the marshes. Claiming to be interested in developing agriculture or extracting resources from the area, Saddam was in fact punishing the rebels who had risen up against him and the people who had sheltered them. Dams along the Tigris and Euphrates blocked the flow of water southward, and by 2000, the UN estimated that 90% of the marshes had dried out. The area went from an oasis to a desert. Mines were planted, and there were reports that the remaining water had been poisoned by army troops. The marsh Arabs left in mass numbers. As many as 120,000 fled to refugee camps in Iran. By 2003, only 1,600 marsh Arabs were estimated to remain. After the regime fell, exiled Iraqis returned and tore down dams, sometimes using dynamite, sometimes with their bare hands. Large portions of the marshes were revived and many of the people who'd left returned. By 2008, up to 75% of the marshes had been restored. But the marshes are shrinking again, and life has not been the same. The water is undrinkable, and the marsh Arabs are forced to buy their water from treatment plants. The water is much saltier, and the land is becoming infertile. Livestock struggles to gain much needed nutrients from the withering grass. Dams upstream in Turkey and Syria have impeded water flow to the region. Less fresh water reaches the delta, and more salt water from the ocean creeps in. These dams provide electricity and systems of irrigation for people in those countries, but they are making the way of life practiced for thousands of years by the marsh Arabs impossible. <laughs>